Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the features of Constraint Layout. This video is a continuation of my previous video where I have talked about why should you use Constraint Layout, the performance optimization that you get, also few of the features like guidelines, relative positioning, and chain. Here we'll see few more features of Constraint Layout. Let me start with the group first. Say that I have two buttons with width and height as wrap and from a single instance I want to set the visibility for both the views. I do not want to manually get the ID then set the visibility to gone or visible. Then how do this is possible? Let me give this as ID as BT1 and then BT2. Also let me bring this below BT1. So top to the bottom of BT1 and let me make this as top to the top of parent. Okay, now you could see two buttons on the screen. Say that I want to set the visibility for both of them to gone. So how should I do it? One way is get the ID and then based on this find you by ID, create an object and then manually set the visibility for this individual views. But this is okay if you have one view or two views. But how about if you have multiple views, you want to set the visibility for say five or 10 views, then it's going to increase the length of code and then it's even hectic to maintain that kind of code. So how about if you could able to set the visibility for all those views right from a single line of code? So that's where group is helpful. So you could create a group. And width and height, just set it to 0 dp because it doesn't require any sort of width and height. The most important part here is reference IDs. Here, while giving the reference ID, you do not need to give at the rate slash ID or at the rate plus ID, nothing like that. Just give the name. Like here I'm giving BT1, BT2 and that's it. Now you could give ID to this group. So from the code, you can set the visibility on this group and it will automatically toggle the visibility for the views which is here it's referencing. For me it's BT1 and BT2, that means both the views. So for example, let me set the visibility to gone. And now you could see the visibility for both the views is now gone. It's all because of the group. But one thing to remember, because you are giving the reference ID to the group and you're toggling the visibility from the group. Now, if you want to switch the visibility for any of the views, which is already referenced here, then that is not possible. For example, like let you give this as visibility is gone and now if I want to make this visibility to visible then this is not going to work. Why is that? Because group takes the preference. So that's it about group. Now let me switch to another feature which is barrier. So let me delete group. Again I have two buttons and let me add one more button. Or let me add text view. Wrap wrap. Let me give text here as this is an example. Now what is my objective here? My objective is to take this text view and place it right after these two buttons. So let me see what I can do here. Let me give the idea TV say text and what I could do is like start to the end of. Why is that? Because the start of this text view at the end of say BT1. So now you could see that this text view is coming after this button and this is fulfilling my objective. I want this text view to be available after these two buttons. But this is having one issue. 
the issue is that because both of them are having equal width so it's okay but how about if the width of any one of this view changes say for example because it is wrap content so let me increase the width of it by giving some text uh, click here at this now you could see that this is not fulfilling the objective which I wanted I wanted this text to be at the right side of these two buttons and why it is not aligning with this it's all because I have given this text view like start to the end of BT1 so now if I change the BT1 width it will push this view further towards the right side hello checking this now you could see this but how about if you want that kind of scenario where doesn't matter either width for one view is changing or another view the views which is aligned after this view either the set of views or individual view you want other side of view to auto adjust themselves and how do you do that that's where barrier is so useful so let me do one thing let me create a barrier again it doesn't require any width and height and what it requires is the reference IDs just like group and here I want to reference based on BT1 and BT2 so that's it so by now I have created a barrier but I haven't defined the direction that I want this barrier towards left right top bottom where do I want this now in my scenario I want it at the end of this views so the barrier direction will be end now you could see this line this line is indicating that I have a barrier now what advantage do we get with this so let me give an ID as barrier and rather than giving this as a start to the end of this BT1 now I could say barrier so what advantage do I'm going to get and the advantage that I'm getting is now when I'm changing the width it's automatically taking that view which is having the highest width and then aligning this view right after that that's what barrier is based on what barrier direction you have specified either top bottom left right end it takes based on either width or height it takes the highest one now if I reduce the width of this you could see that this text view will come towards the left so by this way you could create a barrier and barrier is really helpful if you want to have views which are aligned based on the group of views so that it will automatically adjust the width or height and when they are adjusting the width and height the other views will get positioned automatically so these two things group and barrier they are called as virtual helper objects and as they are virtual that's why you do not specify the width and height for them that's it in this video and in the next video I'm going to talk about how you can define the width and height based on percentage also how you can give the width or height based on ratios apart from this how you can align one view with a circular positioning with respect to another view so we'll see all of them in the next tutorial so if you have liked this video then hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel stay tuned and have a good day